is Carol Acevedo for the Women's Praise and Worship Center located in Plant City, Florida, where my husband Rafael Acevedo is the pastor. And our women's ministry leader is Sister Lori Gay. I was recently given the task by Sister Lori to share an online message to the church webpage. After much prayer and waiting on the Lord and watching for signs, I came across a devotional written by Christy Walker, who was a missionary to Germany. I was convinced that this was what the Lord would have me to share. He wanted me to join with Christy to share his message to the church. The title of her devotion was Three Reminders from Paul about being homebound during COVID-19. She started out with the reminder that at present, the whole world is in quarantine, homebound or in isolation because of COVID-19. But God our Father knew that this would happen and he inspired the Apostle Paul long ago to address this in the Bible. Not about COVID-19, but about how to act as the church when we are in forced isolation situation. The Apostle Paul spent a great deal of time in prison and under house arrest. Paul left Timothy in Ephesus to provide leadership to the congregation there. Timothy was Paul's mentee, like a son in the faith. Paul spent a lot of time sharing with Timothy and training Timothy. While he was in prison, he wrote a letter to Timothy. And it included instructions that demonstrate and model to the church what God wants us to do during such times. I'm going to turn the Bible to 2 Timothy 2, verse 1 through 9, and I will be reading from the NIV version. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in this in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The workman, the hardworking farmer, should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Reminder number one from Paul, God's grace leads to strength. 
Paul was a prisoner in a Roman dungeon when he wrote this. Not long afterward, he was beheaded. The purpose of 2 Timothy was to encourage Timothy in his ministry at Ephesus. The primary theme of the letter is the need for faithfulness in the face of hardship. If anyone understood and needed God's strength, it was Paul. Paul understood captivity. He understood being housebound. He was bound for spreading not a contagious virus, but a contagious gospel, the good news of salvation through Christ Jesus. Paul's advice to Timothy was to be strong or be empowered. Timothy was not going to find his strength within himself. His strength would be found in one place only, in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That means that Timothy's strength would be a gift from God. The same good news or gospel that landed Paul in prison would be Timothy's solution in time of weakness. Have you ever felt weak or felt like giving up? Paul knew that Timothy would feel that way, especially in ministry. Timothy may have struggled with fear. Paul wrote, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Timothy needed reminders not to fear, but to lean on Jesus for strength. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Jesus himself reminds Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Reminder number two from Paul, God's plan is still disciple making. One thing many of us are doing right now during this challenging time of COVID-19 is sharing hope and encouragement on social media. Hopefully, we are not aiding in spreading fear and panic. Paul told Timothy, and the things that you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. In other words, in hard times, pass along trusted advice and encouragement. However, there's more to it than that. Instead of simply spreading good news far and wide, which is okay too, Paul encouraged Timothy to be selective in his audience. He is to entrust Paul's words to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others this is intention, intentionality. This is disciple making. A farmer doesn't throw his precious costly seeds all over the county. He plants the seed in cultivated soil. He wants a harvest. We know from the parable of the sower of in Matthew 13 that seeds sown on hard ground doesn't grow well. Even if they spring up, they don't reach maturity. This is the point Paul is making to Timothy. Be choosy, be intentional. You will reap what you sow, so sow with wisdom. Find reliable people who will continue to teach others and spread the gospel and invest in them. Why? It yields a greater harvest when we make disciples who will make disciples who will make disciples. It's about multiplication. So how can you do that? 
use this time of having to stay at home to start an online Bible study with someone. Or find a prayer partner and contact each other weekly for prayer. Or ask someone you trust to keep you spiritually accountable during this time. Or Find ways to share God's love and truth with someone you've been praying for. Be intentional about training up your own children or grandchildren in the faith. Timothy, at this kind of spiritual heritage, his mother and grandmother sowed the seed of faith in his heart as a young child and it grew to maturity and reproduced. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefather did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayer night and day, greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, I am persuaded that is in you also. That is written in 2 Timothy 1, 3 to 5. Pause reminder number three, God's words is not bound, even when we are. There are times in life when we are limited, and Paul was writing from a dungeon prison. A large portion of the globe is currently outbound due to this global pandemic. But Paul reminded Timothy, the word of God is not bound. Even in the technically challenged age in which Paul was writing, the word of God was spreading through letters, through God's people, through the growth of the early trial church, even through persecution. Nothing can stop God and his word. Christ said to Peter in Matthew 16 verse 18, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Nothing can stop God. So how will you carry yourself or behave during this time of quarantine? May I encourage you to practice gospel soul winning actions and demonstration behaviors whenever you get the opportunity to do so. With your friends, with your children, with your family, with your neighbors, with the workmen who visit your house to do work? So let me ask you a question. Has anyone ever told you that God loves you and that he has a wonderful plan for your life? He does. Let me ask you another question. If you were to die this very second, do you know for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you would go to heaven? You're not sure? Let me quickly share with you what the Bible says about this. It reads, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It also says, for the wages of sin is debt, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible also reads, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you are whosoever, right? Of course you are. All of us are. 
I am going to say a quick prayer for you that are listening to me right now. Let us pray. May the Lord bless you and your family with long and healthy lives. Jesus, make yourself real to them. Jesus, do a quick work in their heart. If any listening to me right now have not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I pray that they will do so now. I have a free gift for you from God. If you would like to receive the gift of eternal life from God today, I want you to repeat or say this prayer after me with your heart and your lips out loud. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. I believe that you are risen from the dead and that you are coming back again for me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost. Give me a hunger for the things of God. Give me a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, I am saved. Thank you, I am born again. Thank you, I am forgiven. And I'm on my way to heaven because I now have Jesus in my heart. If you prayed that prayer and really meant it, I must tell you, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, all of your sins are forgiven today. Always remember to run to God and not from God because he loves you and he has a great plan for your life. Come out to church when the quarantine is over. But for now, you can have church online in your living room. Read your Bible daily. Get to know God. Pray daily. You want to talk to Him. He wants to hear from you. Worship God. Tell others about your salvation, your newfound faith. Share it with others. Be the light to those around you. Someone once says, wherever you are is your mission field. Occupy. Take advantage. Do what God plan for you. Live God's plan. I want to thank you for watching and please share your comments on the website. And if you did invite Jesus in your heart for the first time today, we would like to know about it. So comment on that also. God bless you and keep you and may you prosper in all that you do.